friends and good morning. I am Miss Beth and I am here for Read with Friends. So welcome friends. The book I would like to share with you today is called Saving Winslow by Sharon Creech. And thank you to HarperCollins Children's, the publisher, for allowing us to share this book with you and read it online and share it through our Facebook and our YouTube channels. If you have not had the pleasure of sitting with us before for a Read With Friends, let me tell you a little bit about it and then we're going to dive right in. Read With Friends is just what it says. We read with you, our friends, the first few chapters of a book, and then we have kits at each location. You can come and pick up the books that we'll be reading in June. In July, there will be a new kit, so you can pick up the books we'll be reading in July, and on and on, and that's how it works. All of our titles are available on either, um, I almost said Kindle, all of our titles are available on either Hoopla or Libby, so make sure to look download your book you can listen to it audio you can read it on your electronic device whichever format and whichever way works best in your life is just fine and I am outside the library here today right next to Clara's overlooking the river so I don't know what kind of noises or friends might pop by or roll by as we're reading we've had a couple bicyclists already so far so We'll just have to say, wait and see what happens. This book is called Saving Winslow. What do you think Winslow is? Is that a sheep or a goat or a cow or a chicken? No, of course it isn't. It's a donkey. Have you ever seen a real life donkey? Chapter one, what is it? In the laundry basket on the kitchen floor was a lump. Another dead thing? Louis asked. Not yet, his father said. It was the midst of winter when night, like an unwelcome guest, came too early and stayed too long, and when each day seemed smaller than the one before. Louis's mother stared down at the basket that her husband had brought into the house. Another one of Uncle Pete's, I presume? Uncle Pete had a small farm on the outskirts of town, Anything to do with Uncle Pete usually involved Louie's father wasting time or money or doing something dangerous like chopping down trees or racing tractors through mud fields or disposing of dead animals. Louie's father had already brought home and buried two piglets that had not survived their birth. Louie knelt beside the basket, a small gray head with black eyes and feathery eyelashes and sticking up ears emerged. Attached to the head was a trembling thin body and four long spindly legs, all of it covered in splotchy gray fur scattered with brown freckles. It was not a dog or a cat. It was a pitiful looking thing and it was gazing at Louie. He felt a sudden rush as if the roof had peeled off the house and the sun had dived into every corner of the kitchen. Have you ever felt like that? I have, usually when it's a dog though, so I don't know, what is this? A goat, he asked, kneeling beside the basket. No, a donkey, his father said. A mini donkey, born last night. A mini donkey? Louis's hand cupped the donkey's head, patting it gently. The donkey seemed too weak to move. Something wrong with it? The mother is sick and can't take care of it. Poor mama, Louis said. Poor baby. What will happen to it? Probably go downhill fast. Might last a day or two. No! So, his mother said, why do you have the donkey? Why did you bring it home if it might just die in a day or two? I don't know, his father said. I felt sorry for it. I thought maybe we could at least watch it until it, you know, until it dies, he whispered the last words. The donkey made a small noise that sounded like, please. Louie lifted the donkey from the basket and held it close. 
It smelled of wet hay. It put its face against Louie's neck and made that noise again. Please? Okay, Louie said. I accept the mission. What mission? To save this pitiful, motherless donkey. Louie's gonna save the donkey. Isn't that great? That's fantastic, right? That should be so good. Have you ever tried to save an animal that was lost or left? Like a puppy or a kitten? I found a kitten at the side of the road one day and we nursed it back to health and we found it a home. Do you think Louie can do that? You do? Gosh, I hope you're right. Chapter number two, something different approaching. Louie's house was old and cold and drafty and leaky, rising up out of its stone cellar with good intention, but weakening as it reached the bowed roof topping the musty attic. The house was like many others on the narrow streets this side of town. Beyond the town stretched farmland and empty fields. In summers past, the house had felt light and airy with cooling breezes puffing the curtains in and out of the windows and always his older brother Gus there, so full of energy and purpose. Come on, Louie, let's paint the porch. And come on, Louie, let's clean out that vegetable patch. And come on, Louie, let's go to the creek. Always with something new to do. But now Gus was in the army, gone already a year. And now it was winter and each day short and dark and cold until this snowy Saturday morning in January with the wind plastering the windows with wet flakes when Louie had awakened feeling floaty, suspended in the air with something different approaching. Aw, oh, so what do we know about Louie? Louie's lonely, don't you think? It sounds like he and his brother Gus were close, even though Gus is older. Do you have an older brother? I have an older brother. He is five years older than me. Can you see how many five years older than me? And he used to get me up and go do fun things too. So I bet he's really missing his big brother right now. But now he feels like he has a purpose. And isn't that exciting when we know we have a purpose or something to look forward to? What do you think he's going to find to do in chapter three? This chapter is called Don't Let It Hear You. Louie had not had the best of luck nurturing small creatures. Uh-oh, that's not good. Those worms he brought into the house when he was three years old? Those cute wriggling little things dried up and died two days later. The lightning bugs so carefully caught and tipped into the glass jars with holes punched in the lid? Dead on the bottom of the jar three days later. Hmm. The lively goldfish won at the carnival. Belly up at the end of the week. Blue parakeet also won at the carnival. Carefully fed and watered and talked to three months. Then gasped its last breath at the bottom of its cage. The kitten found at the side of the road. Ran away the second day. Oh. The bird, limping across the porch and gently brought indoors, flew out an open window two days later. Man, hamster, snake, turtle, lizard. Louie tried, but all of them, each and every one, either shriveled and died or escaped. More recently, he'd been longing for a dog. His parents thought it would be a better idea if he borrowed a dog from time to time, one that didn't live with them, one that didn't need walking in the rain and snow, and one that didn't pee on the carpet or chew on the furniture. So Louie was more than a little surprised when his father came home that Saturday morning with a pitiful donkey wrapped in a blue blanket. I don't want to watch it die, his mother said. No, no dying, Louie said. I told you, I accept the mission. The pitiful creature tentatively touched its nose to Louie's. Aww, don't 
get attached, his mother warned. You're going to be heartbroken when it... Shh, Louis said. Don't let it hear you. He asked his father if it was a boy or a girl. It's a boy, he said. Poor thing. His parents stepped out onto the front porch to discuss the situation. Louis could see his mother waving her arms here and there and his father nodding helplessly, shrugging his shoulders as if he realized he had not thought this through. And then Louis saw him waving his arms and smiling and making a cute donkey face. Can you make a cute donkey face? Let's make one. Is that how a donkey looks? I don't know how they look. I'm trying, I'm trying. Let me see yours. Oh, you're so much better than me. The pitiful donkey was trembling in Louis's arms, his wee head nuzzling Louis's neck, his long spindly legs folded up awkwardly. By the time his parents came inside, Louis had a plan. He'll stay in the cellar. I can sleep there with him on the cot. Maybe we could have the heater on at night. We need to go to the feed store and get some hay for him to sleep on and a bottle and some milk formula. His mother's mouth opened and shut. And no words came out. Mom, will you watch him while Dad and I get supplies? Louie handed the donkey to her, pushing him gently into her reluctant arms. Louie's mother bent her head to the donkey, studying his sweet face. Go on, she said, but I'm warning you both. He might not last the night, and if he does, he might not last another day or two. You're going to be so, so sad. No, Louie said, I will save Winslow. Winslow, his mom said, that's his name, Winslow. It just came to me, out of the air. What do you think about the name Winslow? Isn't that so sweet? I love that name, how cute. And he's gonna sleep in the basement, down in the basement, which he already said is kind of damp and kind of gross. Louie must be super responsible and super committed to make Winslow thrive and stay alive. If he's willing to sleep in the basement, don't you think? It's not a nice basement, so he must really, really love Winslow. Now I know we normally just read three chapters, but number two was really short. So we're gonna do one more before we wrap it up, okay? Chapter four, think positive. Next door lived Louie's friend, Mac, whose father owned the feed store. Louie had been in the feed store many times helping Mac stock shelves, so he was familiar with the layout. He could direct customers to the cow halters, the livestock feed bins, the portable cages and tick repellent, vitamin supplements for animals of all types, and to books on every farm animal from pigs to donkeys. Mac was there when Louie and his father arrived. They told him about the donkey and chose a suitable powdered milk formula. A small bag, Louis's father said, because it probably won't live very... Shh, yes it will. Don't say that, Louis said. Mac recommended a book all about donkeys, but Louis's father said they could get it from the library. Because, you know, what will we need it for if the donkey... Um, if, if it... Shh, don't say it. Think positive, Louis said. That was pretty much how it was with the few items his father accepted. The smallest bottle, the smallest bag of formula, the tiniest vial of vitamins, the two-page free pamphlet titled The Newborn Donkey, instead of the 200-page book all about donkeys, because he was convinced this would all be wasted on the pitiful donkey. His father did not want to buy a bale of hay for bedding, but Mac's dad offered to throw in a partial bale for free because it had fallen off someone's truck. We're gonna feel pretty stupid, his father said, if we get home and find a dead donkey. Quit saying that, Louis said. 
I just don't want you to get your hopes up, said his dad. That's the end of chapter four and nearly the end of our time together today, folks. Make sure you look on Hoopla and Libby to find Saving Winslow, to download it in whatever format works best for you, and make sure you read the rest of the book because I can't believe that in four chapters that's the end of our story. I know it's not. I read the book. So, shh, disclaimer, you have to read the book to find out all about how big Winslow gets, how good Winslow is, and how happy Louis is to have saved his friend Winslow. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little snippet of this book and that you take the time to read the rest of it and get into the library to get your bag of all the Read With Friends books for this month of June. And July's right around the corner, so if you miss June, that's okay. Get in there starting July 1 and you can get July's books and be all set to read with friends. You guys have a great rest of your day and I hope you have an even better tomorrow. I'll see you soon.